Crisis theory, concerning the causes and consequences of the tendency for the rate of profit to fall in a capitalist system, is now generally associated with Marxist economics. Earlier analysis by Jean-Charles Leonard de Sismundi provided the first suggestions of the systemic roots of crisis. The distinctive feature of Sismundi's analysis is that it is geared to an explicit dynamic model in the modern sense of this phrase. Sismundi's great merit is that he used, systematically and explicitly, a schema of periods, that is, that he was the first to practice the particular method of dynamics that is called period analysis. John Stuart Mill in his of the tendency of profits to a minimum, which forms Chapter 3 of Book IV of his Principles of Political Economy and Chapter 5, Consequences of the Tendency of Profits to a Minimum, provides a conspectus of the then accepted understanding of a number of the key elements, after David Ricardo, but without Karl Marx's theoretical working out of the theory that Frederick Engels posthumously published in Capital, Volume 3. A survey of the competing theories of crisis in the different strands of political economy and economics was provided by Anwar Sheikh in 1978, and by Ernest Mandel in his Introduction to the Penguin edition of Marx's Capital Volume 3 particularly in the section Marxist Theories of Crisis p. at SEQ where Mandel says more about the theoretical confusion on this question at that time, even among thoughtful and influential Marxists, than an excursus or introduction to Marx's crisis theory. Marx's crisis Crisis theory was only partially understood even among leading Marxists at the beginning of the 20th century. His notes, Books of Crisis Notebooks B84, B88 and B91 remain unpublished and have seldom been referred to. A relatively small group including Rosa Luxemburg and Lenin attempted to defend the revolutionary implications of the theory, while others, first Eduard Bernstein and then Rudolf Hilferding, argued against its continued applicability, and thereby founded one of the mainstreams of revision of the interpretation of Marx's ideas after Marx. It was Henrik Grossmann in 1929 who most successfully rescued Marx's theoretical presentation. He was the first Marxist to systematically explore the tendency for the organic composition of capital to rise and hence for the rate of profit to fall as a fundamental feature of Marx's explanation of economic crises in capital, apparently entirely independently Samezo Karuma was also in 1929 drawing attention to the decisive importance in Marx's writings and made the explicit connection between crisis theory and the theory of imperialism. Following the extensive setbacks to independent working class politics, the widespread destruction both of people, property and capital value, the 1930s and 40s saw attempts to reformulate Marx's analysis with less revolutionary consequences, for example in Joseph Schumpeter's concept of creative destruction, and his presentation of Marx's crisis theory as a prefiguration of aspects of what Schumpeter, and others, championed as merely a theory of business cycles. More than any other economist, Marx identified cycles with the process of production and operation of additional plant and equipment. There have been attempts, particularly in periods of capitalist growth and expansion, most notably in the long post war boom, to both explain the phenomenon and to argue that Marx's strong statements of its law like fundamental character under capitalism have been overcome in practice, in theory, or both. As a result, there have been persistent challenges to this aspect of Marx's theoretical achievement and reputation. Keynesians argue that a crisis may refer to an especially sharp bust cycle of the regular boom and bust pattern of chaotic capitalist development, which, if no countervailing action is taken, could continue to develop into a recession or depression. It continues to be argued in terms of historical materialism theory, that such crises will repeat until objective and subjective factors combine to precipitate the transition to the new mode of production either by sudden collapse in a final crisis or gradual erosion of the basing on competition and the emerging dominance of cooperation. Topic causes of crises Karl Marx considered his crisis theory to be his most substantial theoretical achievement. He presents it in its most developed form as law of tendency for the rate of profit to fall combined with a discussion of various counter-tendencies, which may slow or modify its impact. Roman Rosdalsky observed that Marx concludes by saying that the law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall is, in every respect the most important law of modern political economy, despite its simplicity, it has never before been grasped and even less consciously articulated. It is from the historical standpoint the most important law. A key characteristic of these theoretical factors is that none of them are natural or accidental in origin but instead arise from systemic elements of capitalism as a mode of production and basic social order. 
In Marx's words, the real barrier of capitalist production is capital itself, the law of the falling rate of profit, the unexpected consequence of the profit motive, is described by Marx as a two-faced law with the same causes for a decrease in the rate of profits and a simultaneous increase of the mass of profits. In short, the same development of the social productivity of labor expresses itself in the course of capitalist development on the one hand in a tendency to a progressive fall of the rate of profit, and on the other hand in a progressive increase of the absolute mass of the appropriated surplus value, or profit, so that on the whole a relative decrease of variable capital and profit is accompanied by an absolute increase of both, topic similarities and differences in the work of J.S. Mill and Marx There are several elements in Marx's presentation which attest to his familiarity with Mill's formulations, notably Mill's treatment of what Marx would subsequently call counteracting tendencies, destruction of capital through commercial revulsions section 5, improvements in production section 6, importation of cheap necessaries and instruments section 7, and emigration of capital section 8. In Marx's system, as in Mill's the falling rate of profit is a long-run tendency precisely because of the counteracting influences at work which thwart and annul the effects of this general law, leaving to it merely the character of a tendency. These counteracting forces are as follows, 1 an increase in the intensity of exploitation via intensification of labor or the extension of the working day, 2 depression of wages below their value, 3 cheapening of the elements of constant capital via increased productivity, 4 relative overproduction which keeps many workers employed in relatively backward industries, such as luxury goods, where the organic composition of capital is low, 5 foreign trade which offers cheaper commodities and more profitable channels of investment, and 6 the increase of stock capital interest-bearing capital, whose low rate of return is not averaged with others. Again, like Mill, Marx indicates the post-crisis waste of capital which restores profitability, but this is not mentioned specifically as a counter-tendency until the cyclical nature of the system is demonstrated. On the other hand, Mill does not refer to depression of wages below their value, relative overpopulation, or the increase in stock capital. But on the most important counter tendencies, that is, the effects of increasing productivity at home in cheapening commodities and of foreign trade in providing both cheaper goods and greater profits, Marx and Mill are in accord. Topic. Application It is a tenet of many Marxist groupings that crises are inevitable and will be increasingly severe until the contradictions inherent in the mismatch between the mode of production and the development of productive forces reach the final point of failure, determined by the quality of their leadership, the development of the consciousness of the various social classes, and other subjective factors. Thus, according to this theory, the degree of tuning necessary for intervention in otherwise perfect Market mechanisms will become more and more extreme as the time in which the capitalist order is a progressive factor in the development of productive forces recedes further and further into the past. But the subjective factors are the explanation for why purely objective factors such as the severity of a crisis, the rate of exploitation, etc., do not alone determine the revolutionary upsurge. A common example is the contrast of the oppression of the working classes in France in centuries prior to 1789 which although greater did not lead to social revolution as it did once the complete correlation of forces appeared. Karuma in his 1929 introduction to the study of crisis ends by noting My use of the term theory of crisis is not limited to the theory of economic crisis. This term naturally also encompasses the study of the necessity of imperialist world war as the explosion of the contradictions peculiar to modern capitalism. Imperialist world war itself is precisely crisis in its highest form. Thus, the theory of imperialism must be an extension of the theory of crisis. David Yaffe, in his application of the theory in the conditions of the end of the post-war boom in the early 1970s, made an influential link to the expanding role of the state's interventions into economic relations as a politically critical element in attempts by capital to counteract the tendency and find news ways to make the working class pay for the crisis. <laughs> Influence Crisis theory is central to Marx's writings, it helps underpin Marxists' understanding of a need for systemic change. It is controversial, Roman Rostolsky said. 
The assertion that Marx did not propose a breakdown theory is primarily attributable to the revisionist interpretation of Marx before and after the First World War. Rosa Luxemburg, Henrik Grossmann and Samezo Karuma rendered inestimable theoretical services by insisting, as against the revisionists, on the breakdown theory. More recently David Yaffe 1972, 1978 and Tony Allen et al., 1978, 1981 in using the theory to explain the conditions at the end of the post-war boom of the 1970s and 1980s reintroduced the theory to a new generation and gained new readers for Grossman's 1929 presentation of Marx's crisis theory. Rosa Luxemburg lectured on the History of Theories of Economic Crises at the SPD's Party School in Berlin possibly in 1911, since the typescript includes a reference to statistics from 1911. Henrik Grossmann's re-presentation of both the central importance of the theory for Marx and the working out of its elements in a partially mathematical form was published in 1929. Central to the argument is the claim that, within a given business cycle, the accumulation of surplus from year to year leads to a kind of top heaviness, in which a relatively fixed number of workers have to add profit to an ever larger lump of investment capital. This observation leads to what is known as Marx's law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall. Unless certain countervailing possibilities are available, the growth of capital outpaces the growth of labor, so the profits of economic activity have to be shared out more thinly among capitals, i.e., at a lower profit rate. When countervailing tendencies are unavailable or exhausted, the system requires the destruction of capital values in order to return to profitability. Hence creating the underlying preconditions for post-war boom. Paul Matic's Economic Crisis and Crisis Theory published by Merlin Press in 1981 is an accessible introduction and discussion derived from Grossman's work. François Chesnace's chapter Marx's Crisis Theory Today in Christopher Freeman ed. Design, Innovation and Long Cycles in Economic Development Francis Pinter, London, discussed the continuing relevance of the theory. Andrew Kleiman has made major new contributions with a thorough and trenchant philosophical and logical defense of the consistency of the theory in Marx's work, against a number of the criticisms proposed against important aspects of Marx's theory since the 70s. Francois Chesnay has provided an important exploration of the fictitious capital or finance capital aspects of the theory in a review of both historical and contemporary empirical research. Topic. Difference between Marxists and Keynesians Keynesian economics which attempts a «middle way» between laissez-faire, unadulterated capitalism and state guidance and partial control of economic activity, such as in the French dirigisme or the policies of the Golden Age of Capitalism attempts to address such crises with the policy of having the state actively supplying the deficiencies of unaltered markets. Marx and Keynesians approach and apply the concept of economic crisis in distinct and opposite ways. The Keynesian approach attempts to stay strictly within the economic sphere and describes boom and bust cycles that balance out. Marx observed and theorized economic crisis as necessarily developing out of the contradictions arising from the dynamics of capitalist production relations. Where Marx differs from Keynes is precisely on the question of the falling rate of profit. It is not the propensity to consume or subjective expectations about future profitability that is crucial for Marx. It is the rate of exploitation and the social productivity of labor that are the key considerations and these in relation to the existing capital stock. While for Keynes the low marginal productivity of capital has its cause in an overabundance of capital in relation to profit expectations, and therefore to a potential overproduction of commodities the capitalist will not invest. For Marx the overproduction of capital is only relative to the social productivity of labor and the existing exploitation conditions. It represents an insufficient mass of surplus value in relation to total capital. So that for Marx the crisis is, and can only be, resolved by expanding profitable production and accumulation, while for Keynes, it can supposedly be remedied by increasing effective demand and this allows for government-induced production. Yaffe noted in 1972 that Passages in Volume 3 referring to the underconsumption of the masses in no way can be interpreted as an underconsumptionist theory of crisis. 
The citation usually given in support of an underconsumptionist theory of crisis is Marx's statement that the last cause of all real crises always remains the poverty and restricted consumption of the masses as compared to the tendency of capitalist production to develop the productive forces in such a way, that only the absolute power of consumption of the entire society would be their limit." The above passage contains within it no more than a description or a restatement of the capitalist relations of production. Marx called it a tautology to explain the crisis by lack of effective consumption. Other explanations have been formulated, and much debated, including The tendency of the rate of profit to fall. The accumulation of capital, the general advancement of techniques and scale of production, and the inexorable trend to oligopoly by the victors of capitalist market competition, all involve a general tendency for the degree of capital intensity, i.e., the organic composition of capital of production to rise. All else constant, this is claimed to lead to a fall in the rate of profit, which would slow down accumulation. Full employment profit squeeze. Capital accumulation can pull up the demand for labor power, raising wages. If wages rise too high, it hurts the rate of profit, causing a recession. The interaction between the employment rate and the wage share has been mathematically formalized by the Goodwin model. Overproduction. If the capitalists win the class struggle to push wages down and labor effort up, raising the rate of surplus value, then a capitalist economy faces regular problems of excess producer supply and thus inadequate aggregate demand and its corollary the underconsumptionist theory. On which Engels comments, "...the underconsumption of the masses, the restriction of the consumption of the masses to what is necessary for their maintenance and reproduction, is not a new phenomenon." It has existed as long as there have been exploiting and exploited classes. The underconsumption of the masses is a necessary condition of all forms of society based on exploitation, consequently also of the capitalist form, but it is the capitalist form of production which first gives rise to crises. The underconsumption of the masses is therefore also a prerequisite condition for crises, and plays in them a role which has long been recognized. But it tells us just as little why crises exist today as why they did not exist before. The post Keynesian economics debt crisis theory of Hyman Minsky. A variety of theories of monopoly capitalism have also been propounded as attempts to explain through exogenous factors why the tendency might not become apparently manifest in periods of capital accumulation, under various historical circumstances. Topic see also Capital, Volume 3 Tendency of the Rate of Profit to Fall Theory of Imperialism Criticisms of Marxism Economic Collapse Late Capitalism List of Economic Crises Marxism Neoliberalism Underconsumption Topic References Topic External links Capital, Volume 1, Chapter 1 by Karl Marx Crisis of Capitalism by Mia Encyclopedia of Marxism Economic Crisis and the Responsibility of Socialists by Rick Kuhn Crisis and Hope, Theirs and Ours Noam Chomsky, 2009 a Critique of Crisis Theory from a Marxist Perspective Current Specialist Blog and Discussion with Resources by Sam Williams from January 2009 For a short video presentation of the theory, search for Professor of Strategic Management Cliff Bowman's 9-minute video introduction to Marx's Theory of Economic Crisis Cranfield University, School of Management Posted to YouTube 2009 Topic Further reading Allen, Tony et al., 1978 The Recession, Capitalist Offensive and the Working Class RCP the 3rd of July 1978 Junius Allen Tony 1981 World in Recession in RCP the 7th of July 1981 Junius Brooks Mick 2012 Capitalist Crisis Theory and Practice A Marxist Analysis of the Great Recession 2007 to 11 Expedia ISBN 9788393426607 7 Bullock Paul and Yaffe David 1975 Inflation The Crisis and the Postwar Boom RC three quarters November 1975 RCG Chesney Francois 1984 Marx's crisis theory today in Christopher Freeman ed design innovation and long cycles in economic development second ed
1984 Francis Pinter, London Chesney, Francois February 2012 World Economy, The Roots of the World Economic Crisis in International Viewpoint Online Magazine, IV 445 Chesney, Francois First Ed 2016 Finance Capital Today, Corporations and Banks in the Lasting Global Slump Haymarket Books Chicago, IL, 2017 Clark, Simon 1994 Marx's Theory of Crisis Macmillan Day, Richard B. 1981 The Crisis and the Crash, Soviet Studies of the West, 1917 to 1939. N. L. B. Grossman, Henrik, 1922. The Theory of Economic Crises. Grossman, Henrik, 1941. Marx, Classical Political Economy and the Problem of Dynamics. Grossman, Henrik, 1929, 1992. The Law of Accumulation and Breakdown of the Capitalist System. Pluto. Grossman, Henrik, 1932, 2013. Fifty Years of Struggle over Marxism, 1883 to 1932. Kleiman, Andrew 2007, Reclaiming Marx's Capital, A Refutation of the Myth of Inconsistency, Lexington, Lanham Kleiman, Andrew 2011, The Failure of Capitalist Production, Underlying Causes of the Great Recession, Pluto Kleiman, Andrew 2015, The Great Recession and Marx's Crisis Theory. American Journal of Economics and Sociology, 74-236-277, 1 Luxembourg, Rosa 2013, Peter Hudis ed. The Complete Works of Rosa Luxemburg, Volume 1, Economic Writings 1, Verso Kuhn, Rick Economic Crisis and Socialist Revolution, Henrik Grossman's Law of Accumulation, Its First Critics and His Responses Kuhn, Rick 2007, Henrik Grossman and the Recovery of Marxism Urbana and Chicago, University of Illinois Press. ISBN 0 252 07352 5. Kuhn, Rick. 2007. Henrik Grossman Capitalist Expansion and Imperialism. Henrik Grossman Capitalist Expansion and Imperialism. In ISR issue 56, November to December. Kuhn, Rick. 2013. Marxist Crisis Theory to 1932 and to the Present. Reflections on Henrik Grossman's 50 Years of Struggle over Marxism. Paper to Society of Heterodox Economists Conference, University of New South Wales, Sydney. 2-3 December 2013 Karuma, Samezo 1929 An Introduction to the Study of Crisis SEP. 1929 Issue of Journal of the O'Hara Institute for Social Research, Vol. V, No. 1 Translated by Michael Schauert Karuma, Samezo 1936 An Overview of Marx's Theory of Crisis first published in August 1936 Issue of Journal of the O'Hara Institute for Social Research. Translated by Michael Schauert Lenin V.I. 1916, Imperialism, The Highest Stage of Capitalism Marx, Karl Marx's Economic Manuscript of 1864-1865 Edited and introduced by Fred Mosley Translated Ben Fawkes, Haymarket 2017 Matic, Paul 1974, Marx and Keynes Merlin Matic, Paul 1981, Economic Crisis and Crisis Theory Merlin Press Matic, Paul 2008, Review of David Harvey's The Limits to Capital in History Historical Materialism 16 4, 213 to 224. Norfield, Tony. 2016. The City, London, and the Global Power of Finance. Verso, London. Predella, Lucia. 2009. Globalization and the Critique of Political Economy: New Insights from Marx's Writings. Routledge, Roman. 1980. The Making of Marx's Capital Pluto Rubin, Isaac Illich 1979 A History of Economic Thought, Inklinks, London Sheikh, Anwar 1978 An Introduction to the History of Crisis Theories in U.S. Capitalism in Crisis, URPE, New York 2 Shaxon, Nicholas 2012 Treasure Islands, Tax Havens and the Men Who Stole the World Vintage Books, London Scholl, Bernice 1947 The Marxian Theory of Capitalist Breakdown Joseph A. Schumpeter History of Economic Analysis Allen and Onwin 1954 Tickton, Hillel, A Marxist Political Economy of Capitalist Instability and the Current Crisis, Critique, Volume 37. Vort Ronald, Pat, 1974 Marxist Theory of Economic Crisis, Australian Left Review, 1 43, 1974, 6-13 Yaffe, David 1972, The Marxian Theory of Crisis, Capital and the State, Bulletin of the Conference of Socialist Economists, Winter 1972, pp 5-58 Yaffe, David 1978, The State and the Capitalist Crisis 2nd ed. RCG reprint. 